Maybe getting a camera roll seven. Let me do you one thing here, sir. Thirty six. We get the kids working, young as they are, any day of the week. Today just happened to be Saturday. We got a special crew out cleaning up and making our routes to school safe. It's a part of our take a, crime, take a bite out of a crime program. Removing the weeds, clearing the sidewalks, removing these brushes. This way we can patrol our area while the kids are traveling to and from school. And at the same time, as you can see, it's beautifying our neighborhood. Well, the new housing has been a great improvement to the neighborhood. The area in which it's located was once part of the Hood scandal. All of that property been cleared away and through the Jefferson Chambers non-profit housing corporation, we have put in 180 new, new apartment buildings. What about the kids? Tell me why, why, you, why you work so hard. Piece of crap up here. Them, you them, what do you do to get them out here? Oh no, um, they get treats sometimes, but this here is something special. They don't know it, but they will, all of them that's participating today, will receive a special badge for outstanding achievement. It's outstanding because anytime you are doing something positive, it's outstanding. They will all receive their little certificates and their badges when we get through with this project. Tell me a little bit about this neighborhood. Well, you grew up here. there's been a great change in it, but the way I put it, we get good cooperation from the parents and also the city crew with Sylvester Jackson from the Jefferson Chalmers Citizen District Council. Working. Working. What do you think about the city? The city? The city got problems, great problems. But one thing about it, we're working on the problems, and we're going to lick the problems. We take it so far, then the young generation will pick it up where we take them off. Speed, 37. Okay, let's show that. We're getting more families. A special interest Rolling. in this neighborhood. Hold on a second. Start all over again. Please. Yeah, it was at 38. While we're still rolling, skip over here. Tell me about the new housing. Just start that new housing. Look, tell me what the new housing did for you. Just stand there. You're on. I was oh. just talking to her. You can talk to her. Yeah, I'll just go back to the truck around it, if you will. What the new housing did for the community, first, it removed an area where a majority of the homes were abandoned, vacant, and dangerous. By building this 180 units here, it gave new housing to some of the families who wished to remain in the neighborhood, and at the same time, it brought in new families.
tail. No tail on 39, no tail. Yeah, 40's up. 40's up. Detroit, Detroit, my home. Boo, 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 boo. Detroit, Detroit, my home. You know, you're not, you weren't really rolling. Detroit, Detroit, my home. Detroit, Detroit, my home. <laughs> was 31. Take them and put them back in the field, not on the sidewalk. Right, the well, leave it there. We'll get it. Swing blade is in the truck over there. Put them all in the field. Put, put them all in the back of the field over there. They, Maybe can't, we can have this. they had changed. Okay, put it back in the field. Okay, put them out. Put them out. That's a, that's a big one in there. Okay, back in the field with it. Let me get that one for you. Yeah? Uh, who put the saw in the truck? Me. Go get it back again. Okay. I go do There's it. There's a tree in here. Ooh. Okay, let's get all the junk out. Oh, you got a tough one. Let me cut it, baby.
Right, don't put no more in this pile here. Okay. So let's, let's get them and drag them back here. We got to stay on this thing. We got it. We're done. We're Interview 36 coming up. He's showing her how to do this. Okay. Tight? 
Show me how to do that. Yeah. Roll some. Speed. Mark it. 40. See there? See, now you're getting all the weeds up. Look down there. See those weeds right there? Look. All right. See? Now, let's get on down here and pull them up. Oh, boy. You're getting a little too old for this, Jesse. Huh? Come on. Come on. Can you pull some of these up? Uh oh, yeah, you get them? Yeah, yeah. Wild grass. Right here. here. Run over and put these in the bag. See that bag over there? You can't put them in the bag. Yeah. Forty-one. I don't think this will fit you. Yeah. I sure hope this weather holds up till tomorrow, John. Cut. This is camera roll 8 and we'll be starting with sound 42, still out on Oakman. Yeah, that's true. Come to think of it, they've been selling. 42 tail. Tell us what you're 43. doing here and what, and what paper is Well, uh, Oakman is a historical neighborhood and over the years it has, I guess people have become comfortable and just allowed things to kind of relax and with the decline in, in city services we have uh, noticed a decline in, in uh, uh, crime uh, because of our, our communication with one another. We've also become uh, closer to the children in the neighborhood. Uh, what about the, up, uh, the upgrading of the value of the property? Well yeah we think that there are some obvious benefits there too. Uh, most of these homes back in the early to mid 50s uh, sold for around thirty, forty thousand uh, dollars. Now uh, they haven't gone up that much, but obviously, if the restoration takes hold and spreads all the way around to Dearborn, we do feel that the market value of these homes, because of the materials that are in them, as well as the the beauty of the neighborhood. Well, we'll raise the. Oh, I love Detroit. <laughs> I lived in Atlanta, Georgia, and everybody talks about Atlanta, Georgia, but there's nothing like Detroit. Tell me why. Well, compared to other cities, really, Detroit is uh, kind of an international, has an international flavor to it. You know, a lot of Detroiters that were born and raised here really don't realize that they're they're right next door to another country. People that live in, say, Atlanta or some of the southern states, uh, they really have to travel a considerable distance to visit a foreign country. So there's a cultural exchange between, uh, I would say, Detroit, or Michigan for that fact, uh, and Canada. And then, too, Detroit is, is kind of close to cities like Chicago, Cleveland. Uh, it's only an hour's flying time to New York. So it's kind of, even though we're at the, the northernmost part of the United States in, in the Midwest, um, we're kind of a, a jump off point to any place you really want to go. Tell me what this neighborhood is like. What well, do you think the neighbors agree with you? I would say so. I would say so. You, you will find that uh, 
everybody has their own individual thoughts on, on, on Detroit and on the community. But I would say, uh, in a general sense, they, they agree with pretty much everything that is going on out here. Um, no one person could certainly do this on his own. I certainly don't have the time uh, working uh, the hours that I work uh, on my job. So uh, obviously there is an identity uh, with the concept of beautification and uh, a loving commitment to the city of Detroit. Well, it's out there, and I'm going to water. I've got to cultivate those flower boxes, so. So I don't know what time he'll get back. Well, do you have the holes on the side of the house? I'll hook it up as long as I'm out there. Do neighbors help each other out all the time here? Miss? I would say so. Come back a second. We just need you Mike talking to him a second. Quickly. Just say, ask, ask her about that hose. Let's get right there. Talk about, do, do the conversation with her again. About the hose. Oh. Do you want me to hook up the hose? Oh, okay. Marie, you want me to hook up the hose uh, for you to water your garden as long as I'm watering mine? That'd be fine, but I don't know what time Mr. Day will be back. But if you have time, you can do well, so it. How long is, is the hose is on the side of the house? Okay. You know, since I'm going to do mine, I might as well do his as well. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate that. I'll be down in about... Uh, Okay. Okay. Don't forget tomorrow. Marker. Get that great case. 44. Tell me about it. Marker. 45. Before we embarked on this program, neighbors really, well, I don't think they really helped each other very much. I think it was a kind of thing where well, the houses really aren't that close together as compared to some other neighborhoods. So, you know, there was something about just maybe getting in your own car. And if you saw your neighbor out working, well, you'd wave and give them a little courtesy wave or something like that and say hi. But everyone pretty much kept to themselves. But uh, um, uh, Mr. Murdoch across the street uh, for years uh, stayed there by himself while... His wife was a was a, a U.S. diplomat in Canada. Now, when my mother was living, she got stuck in the snow. He'd come right across here and, and help her get out of the snow. He's up in age now. I see him out mowing his yard, and if it's a hot day, I go over there and I help him. Uh, sometimes he'll tell me, no, I'm just about done, or I'm not doing that much, but uh, I still make the effort to, to help him. And it's fairly consistent with just about everyone in here. Mark it. Uh, we're coming up on the Isle of Beauty now. Now they have said that they're going to join the Partners Program with Slow the down. Department of Parks and Recreation. Slow down quite a bit for me, would you? Okay. And uh, they're also going to um, uh, compete in the SNAP Award sponsored by the Detroit City Council. I believe that they're really going to uh, go all out. Parker. And now, you know, uh, having the blocks come in one by one uh, shows that there is a true identity to the concept of keeping Detroit beautiful and returning it to its original grandeur. Sort of like, if the city can't afford to do it, we've got to do it. you got to do it. Oh, certainly. you got to prove it yourself. Oh, certainly. Uh, the, analogy, the analogy that we use in promoting this whole beautification project and the restoration of the city is that if the fire department was off, say, chasing another fire and there were no fire trucks and your house caught on fire, then what would you do? Uh, you'd have to go out, take the garden hose, hook it up to the side of your own water spigot and put the fire out yourself. So that's essentially what is happening here. The city has limited funds um, and neighbors are just going to have to realize that 
they can't sit back any longer and expect to, the city to do the job on its own. They have a vested interest in this community by virtue of the, the quality of homes that are here. So they're just going to have to pitch in, join in, and clean up the neighborhood themselves. Thank you.